the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Religious horror just doesn't have the impact it used to. Church membership is far lower today than it was when The Exorcist was released, and the new Catholic-themed horror movie Immaculate acknowledges this trend. The heroine, Sydney Sweeney's sister Cecilia, moves to Italy to become a nun after the dissolution of her hometown parish. Drastic measures, but sure. Immaculate even nods toward a key source of lost faith among Catholics when Sister Cecilia is asked if her church closed because the priest got in trouble. Pure as she is, Cecilia understands the implication and insists that's not what happened, at least not in her case. The film continues engaging with the Catholic Church's history of sexual abuse, albeit in the sideways fashion scary movies address real-life horrors. This isn't a possession movie, unless you consider the hijacking of reproductive freedom by patriarchal forces to be demonically inspired. That's a provocative idea, but unfortunately Immaculate's execution is as safe as can be. I promise to carry myself with grace because I want nothing more than to belong here. I'm afraid I've already messed things up. After a cold open in which black-robed silhouettes glide across a misty courtyard in pursuit of a runaway lamb, Immaculate turns its attention to Cecilia. She's just arrived at the Our Lady of Sorrows convent in hopes of pledging her life to the church. She does so under the mentorship of Father Sal, a former geneticist who's a little too handsome to be a priest. On the night of her novitiate ceremony, Cecilia tells Father Sal about a near-death experience she had when she was 12 years old. She believes God saved her for a reason, and she hopes to find that reason at Our Lady of Sorrows. Boy, will she ever. The vibe at the convent is part cottagecore and part goth. The sisters spend their days hanging laundry and caring for the sick in a rustic valley that happens to sit on top of an ancient catacomb. It's a beautiful place, shot with an overcast colour palette illuminated by flickering candlelight. Death is a part of everyday life at the convent, as Simona Tabasco's stern sister Mary tells Cecilia. But that's not enough to frighten her on its own. Catholicism is famously morbid, as demonstrated by the sisters' veneration of a long iron nail supposedly pulled from Christ's palm. But the screaming in the courtyard and nuns in red zentai suits ought to ring some alarm bells, no? Cecilia's leisurely awakening to the sinister happenings in her midst is a major flaw of the film's structure. Immaculate meanders for quite a while before deciding that it might as well start ramping up the tension just before its climax. During this long lull, Sweeney's face is placid and her body language is inert. At best, her eyes fill with tears and her lips quiver, as in a scene where her fellow nuns dress her in the vestments of the Virgin Mother. It's a striking image, but its impact doesn't linger. In fact, little in the first 80 minutes of this 88 minute film does. Immaculate has an outrageous ending that almost makes up for the formulaic nature of everything that precedes it. Cecilia finally finds her courage, and Sweeney starts delivering the kind of gonzo, blood-soaked performance that a film like this needs. But by then, it's too late. Up to that point, director Michael Mohan allows sheer volume, in the form of both loud jump scares and deep rumbling music cues, to do much of the work in terms of terrifying the audience. <laughs> By prioritizing these cheap thrills, he leaves many promising elements behind. A macabre setting, a rising star, an aesthetic appreciation for the classics of the genre, and old ladies skittering around dark hallways and making creepy dolls out of hair. Remnants? Immaculate has all the elements of a successful religious horror movie. It's beautifully shot and very loud. But much of the film is simply too mild and reliant on jump scares, and Sidney Sweeney's performance doesn't achieve the hysterical heights a movie like this needs until it's too late. For more movie reviews, check out what we said about Roadhouse and Kung Fu Panda 4. And for everything else, stick with IGN.